Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest. Breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King on your husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. With summer here, pleasure driving time has arrived. There are more daylight hours, nice weather, and the fine outlook of the summer countryside. If you are on the highways or the road anywhere these summer days, be especially careful. There will be the inevitable traffic tie-ups and delays, the reckless drivers, the slow drivers, and the innumerable other incidents that can make warm weather driving so unpleasant and hazardous. Don't let your good spirits bubble over into unsafe speeds. When you're driving at high speeds, you can't stop as fast, can't control steering as well, and your eyes can't detect as clearly fast-moving hazards that seem to whiz past your car. So drive slower. You may arrive at your destination a little later, but your chances of getting there are better. When you're driving in the country, take it easy and enjoy your ride. Drive carefully and make this your best summer ever. This message is brought to you as a public service. told his story as he and Sergeant Preston hurried down Northern Avenue toward 4th Street. I had supper at the mansion house, Sergeant. I was on my way home. I just turned off Northern on to 4th Street when I heard the shot. Harvey's was the only cab that showed a light, and the shot sounded like it might have come from there. So I ran down the block. When I got to the cabin, I, I looked in the window. Harvey was sprawled out on the floor. There was a gun near his right hand, and there was a red stain on his shirt. Getting bigger every second. It was right over his heart. I tried the front door. It was locked. I ran around in back. The kitchen door was open. You mean open or unlocked? Unlocked. I I went in through the kitchen to the front room. It looked to me as if Harvey were dead. Did you touch him? Oh, no, sir. I decided the best thing for me to do was to get the doc and you. That's what I did. How'd you leave the cabin? By the front door. The key was in the lock. See anyone around? No, Sergeant. The street was deserted. Wait. You're not suggesting it could be anything but suicide, are you? Only trying to get the facts. Oh, this is fourth. Oh, to the left. The only cabin showing a light. Come on. The doctor was still kneeling beside the body when the sergeant and Bill entered the cabin. Well, Doc? The bullet was fired at close range. It must have gone straight through his heart. I'd say he died instantly. Hmm. Houston, this gun. Do you happen to know if it's Harvey? Well, he had a gun. I never noticed what make it was. I, I don't know much about guns. Colt 38. One bullet fired. Yeah, poor Harvey. It's an awful thing to do, but I don't suppose you can blame him much. Well, why do you say that? Well, it's bad luck. Haven't you heard? No, I never knew the man. I'm talking about Jake Hillary's strike. You must have heard about that. Jake was spreading the news all over town this afternoon. He and his partner hit a big vein of pure gold on their claim. And their claim is right next to the one Harvey you saw. Used to own? Until a week ago, Sergeant. He sold it then. Not even that. He, he lost it. He ran out of cash in a poker game, and he put up a claim against $1,000. He lost. I see. If he still owned it, he could get 100000 for it without turning a shovel full of gravel. And that's a fact, Sergeant. I heard this guy from New York offer Ben Chalmers that much at 6 o'clock this evening. He's in the mansion house lobby. You can ask anybody who was there. Ben Chalmers, I take it. The man who won the claim. Yeah. Is he going to sell? Are you considering? Well, what do you think, Doctor? Complete to motive and open and shut case of suicide. And that was how the case was listed at headquarters. A probable suicide with a final verdict waiting for the coroner's inquest. 
The sergeant, always thorough, interviewed Ben Chalmers at the mansion house before writing even a preliminary report. He was shown the deed to 23 Bonanza, and Chalmers confirmed the details of the poker game in which Harvey Shannon had lost the claim. It's a terrible thing, Sergeant. I... I'd like to take care of the funeral expenses. Bill Houston will be making the arrangements. I suggest you get in touch with him. I shall, Sergeant. If there's anything else I can do... He'll uh... be called on to testify at the inquest. The loss of the claim is pertinent to the case. Of course. I understand. <laughs> Sergeant found King waiting for him outside of headquarters. Oh, boy, where have you been? Having a run in the woods? <laughs> oh, what's this stuck in your collar, huh? <laughs> oh, let's see... My cabin's in the clearing near Crystal Spring. There are two men in the woods who are trying to kill me. I need your help. Ned Travers. <laughs> Ned Travers, King. Oh, I remember he's a trapper. We met him in the woods one day when we were hunting. <laughs> All right, boy, if he needs our help, he'll get it. <laughs> the sergeant left word with Downey where he was going and headed out of town and into the woods with King. He found the cabin near Crystal Spring without any difficulty. The place was dark and empty. There was a lamp on the table. The sergeant lit it. <laughs> Wish I knew what you were trying to tell me, King. I'll take a look around. A lot of muddy footprints in here. Fresh. No sign of a fight. Huh? Wait. Empty cartridges here by the window. There has been a fight. Where's our friend Travis, though? And why should someone be trying to kill him? Well, there can't be much scent on this note you're dropping, but it may give you the idea, boy. Hey, King. Find him. Find <laughs> The trail King was following swung in a wide arc through the forest and back to the outskirts of town. There, King led the way to a cabin and sniffed at the door. He was about to go on when the sergeant stopped him. Wait, King. Someone coming up the street. I'd like to know who lives here. It was a girl walking toward them. She recognized the sergeant, but there was another surprise in her voice as she greeted him. Sergeant Preston. Yes, you're Mary Lawrence, aren't you? You sing at the music hall. That's right. Is this your cabin? Why, yes. Is anything wrong? You know a man called Ned Travers? <laughs> Indeed, I do. We're to be married next month. Well, then perhaps you can help me. I'm looking for him. Oh, it's probably... I know. We've just been there. King followed his trail here. Ned's evidently gone, but you might be able to give us some information that will help us. Oh, help you do what? I don't understand. Why are you following me? He seems to be in trouble. He stuck this note in King's collar, and King bought it to me. There's a someone's trying to kill him, and he needs our help. I'm oh, Do you know of any enemies he might have? Oh, no, sir. King had been sniffing at the cabin door. Now he started pawing at it. What's the matter, boy? Oh, look, Mary. A piece of paper slipped under the door. Oh, let me see. It's from me, but I can't see it very well. Come on inside, and I'll light a lamp. All right. On the table there. I'll light it. Now then. Dear Mary, as I was coming back from the spring this evening, someone started shooting at me. I ducked into the cabin without being hit and caught a glimpse of two men near the edge of the clearing. There was some more shooting, and then twice. Well? Oh, the next is about King showing up in the note to you. Well, finally, the sky clouded over, and it got so dark that I decided to make a break for it. Maybe I should go straight to headquarters now, but since I don't know who's after me or why, I don't want to show myself in town. I'm borrowing your horse and heading for Aurora City, the old dance hall. Aurora City? Why, that's a ghost town. Uh -huh, I know Will you get in touch with Sergeant Preston and show him this? Maybe he can find out what it's all about. Well, Ned. Well, I don't see how I can find out anything without some help from him. Well, Laura isn't far, but why there? Why should he go there? Well, he and a friend of his used to own the dance hall. They ran it until the boom collapsed and everyone left the town. I thought Ned was a trapper. He is, but well, he's been involved in a lot of other businesses during the off season. He makes money during the winter and loses it during the summer. However, he's promised not to get involved in any more of Harvey's crazy Who did things. you say? Well, Harvey. Harvey Shannon. They were partners in the dance hall. Harvey Shannon? Well, what's the matter? Well, I wonder if there's any connection between his death and this attempt on Ned's well, life. Yes. Harvey's dead? Earlier this evening, he was found with a bullet through his heart. It seemed to be suicide. What? Well, why should he commit suicide? Because of a claim he lost at poker, which has since turned out to be worth a fortune. Oh, I 
you remember? Ned told me that he was leaving the claim. Mary, Ned didn't happen to own it in partnership with Harvey, did he? No, Sergeant. Are you sure? I'm positive. Ned was thinking about raising a thousand dollars and buying the claim back from Ben Chalmers, but I discouraged the idea. Perhaps I shouldn't have. Perhaps you didn't succeed. What? In discouraging him. Oh, I'm sure I did. I'll soon find out. Come on, King. I'll get Blackie and head for the ghost town. Aurora was only a few miles up the Yukon. Once it rivaled Dawson as a boom town, but now it was silent and deserted under the waning moon. The sergeant rode slowly up the town's one street toward the dance hall. A faded sign still announced it to be Travis and Shannon's palace. But palace though it may have been a year ago, it was now in an advanced state of disrepair, and dark as a tomb. The sergeant rode past a flight of outside steps which ran up to the second floor. Oh, boy, King. Oh, boy. There, he drew rein and dismounted in front of the main entrance. Don't worry, King. I'm keeping my eyes and ears open. The sergeant stopped in front of the door. It might not be healthy to show ourselves with the moon behind us. Well, let's try it this way. Martin kicked the door open and sprang to one side of the entrance. A volley of shots blasted the silence of the night. continue our adventure in just a moment. Right, please, you're up. Say, kids, wouldn't you like to be in the ballpark and see how a star pitcher makes the ball curve right over home plate? Golly, everything about a major or minor league game is exciting. Get in on that excitement. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and have mom or pop with you or another paying adult relative. It's as easy to get a free baseball ticket as going to the grocery store. Get it right inside packages of Quaker Pop wheat and Quaker Pop rice and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Golly, why wait? When Mom buys breakfast cereal, be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Pop Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Now to continue. The sergeant patted King as they stood to one side of the dance hall's open door. Now we'll find out if it was a friend or an enemy shooting at us, King. Hold your fire in the name of the law. The law. Are you Ned Travis? Yes. Are you? Oh, wait a minute. This may be a trick. I'm Preston. I'm not so sure of that. Well, I'm not going to walk through that door until you are. If you don't recognize my voice, you may recognize my friend. Speak point. <laughs> Satisfied? Yeah, yes, come in. I'm moving the car down behind the bar. You better shut the door. I was afraid you might be expecting other visitors. I've already had them. Huh? Come on around the bar and get down, Sergeant. You've already had visitors in this ghost town? Yes. They must have followed me from Dawson. I put my horse in the stables. The rear entrance is nailed shut, so I came around in front. And just as I got to the top of the veranda steps, they opened fire. From the cover of the buildings down the street. First, let's try and figure out why they want to kill you. No, I don't even know who they are. Have you had any business dealings with Harvey Shannon lately? What? Harvey? We used to be partners. I said lately. Why, I I don't see what that has to do with this. It may have everything to do with it. Sergeant, it's a personal matter. You see, I promised Mary that I wouldn't advance Harvey any more money. But and... you didn't. Well... Give me a straight answer, then. All right, I... I let him have a thousand dollars. When? What for? Today, this noon. It was to buy back the claim he lost in a poker game. Did he buy it back? Yes. Were you a witness? Why, yes. I took the money to Harvey's place this noon. Ben Chalmers was already there. Harvey gave him the money, and Ben gave him back the deed and signed a quit claim. I witnessed it. After Ben left, Harvey and I signed a partnership agreement. I, I have my copy right here. Harvey agreed to work the claim, and we'd share 50-50 in whatever he got out of it. Here. I'll let him match. Oh, uh... No. Well, this isn't the partnership agreement. This is a quit claim. I must have stuck it in my pocket by mistake. Here's the agreement. No wonder they're trying to kill you. Well, why? A simple little business transaction. Listen, the claim may have been worth $1,000 at noon today. But at 6 o'clock, it was worth 100000 What? 
I don't understand. Jake Hillary struck a vein of pure gold on 22, next door to your claim, and the vein runs onto your property. What? That's wonderful. I haven't finished. At 8 o'clock, Harvey Shannon is found dead, a bullet through his heart. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Ned, it's true. The shooting's been listed as a probable suicide. Well, that couldn't be. I agree, no. What you told me changes the whole complexion of the case. And since the deed to the claim is now in Ben Chalmers' possession... But, Sergeant, if he has it, he must have stolen it. Yes, and shot Harvey Shannon. However, you were a witness to the transaction. I have the quit claim deed he gave to Shannon as proof of it right here. And that made it necessary to get rid of you and get that paper back. It's Ben who's been trying to kill me. Not personally. I was talking with him at the mansion house the same time your cabin was being attacked. He's hired some killers. Well, what do we do now? Get back to Dawson. Oh, he's down. There's someone on the balcony just above us. Yeah, I see him rounding the corner. He's heading for the staircase. Sergeant. He's calling for you. Oh, God, no, 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 As the shot rang out, the man at the head of the staircase clutched his chest and then fell forward, tumbling over and over all the way down the stairs. Where did that shot come from? One of the rooms off the balcony. Don't show yourself yet. Garrett. The man who was shot, Ted Garrett. Judd Garrett, probably. Have a hear of him? Sure. One of Ben Chalmers' friends. As big a roughneck as there is in Dawson. Okay. That guy at the bottom of the stairs is calling you. Yes, I'll see what he wants. Better stay here if Garrett's on the balcony. Darker hey. down here than it is up there. I'll keep an eye out for him. Oh. Matt Brent, another friend of Ben Chalmers. Sergeant, no, no sense at all. What are you trying to say? So we heard you. Oh. We heard you talking to Ned. There was no sense in going on with it. I wanted to call it quit. Garrett wouldn't let me. Said he'd put a bullet through me if I turned yellow. I made a break for it. I was going to tell you everything. It isn't too late for that. Who killed Harvey Shannon? Chalmers. Ten thousand. Garrett and me to get Travis. Chalmers killed Shannon and stole the deed to number 23 Bonanza. Yes. But Travis had to die too. Or... Or... Instead, you were the one to die. Sergeant, Garrett must have gone down the outside stairs. I heard someone riding away. So did I. Well, this man. Matt Brent, he's dead. I'll take him back to Dawson and arrest the murderers. It was nearly daybreak when Judd Garrett reached the mansion house and ran up the stairs to Ben Chalmers' room. Open up! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, this job finished. Yeah, it's finished for us. What? I mean it. We got to get out of here. What are you talking about? I'll tell you. We followed Travis to the dance hall in the road. Sergeant Preston showed up there. Preston? Listen, we were up on the balcony. They were on the lower floor. We could hear them talking. Preston got the whole dope. He knows you killed Harvey Shannon. Well, why didn't you kill him and Travis? Ten thousand. I'd have given you fifty thousand. I asked Shannon to claim anything you wanted. They were behind the bar underneath the balcony. Couldn't get a shot at them. Could have waited till they showed themselves. Matt lost his nerve. He wanted to call the whole deal off. Spill the beans to the sergeant. I a rat. And he died like one, hmm? You? Yeah. But that made the odds two to one against me. I wasn't having any. I let out. Oh, you can yell at me. You can call it that if you want to. I wish my neck to come back here and warn you. You want me to leave and give up the claim? You've lost it, Ben. All you can save now is your neck. How much money do you have? Sold us cash. Enough. Northern Star is leaving for St. Michael at daybreak. Less than an hour. The only chance to get out of the country. Oh, a hundred thousand I was offered. Too bad you couldn't take it. I didn't even have the deed then. Build milk. Stay here to cry about it and you'll have a stretched neck. I'm taking that boat. Okay, I'm with you. I'll be ready in ten minutes. continue our adventure in just a moment. He did it! A home run! And the home team wins the game! Are you kids there? Are you seeing the exciting homers that your home team makes? Win or lose, there's nothing like the fun of a baseball game. The hot dogs, the popcorn, seeing star players in person. Come out to the ball game now as guests of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right inside packages of Quaker Puff Wheat, Quaker Puff Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult relative and see a wonderful major or minor league baseball game free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry, get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Remember, the more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals you get, the more free baseball tickets you get. Now, 
show to continue. When Sergeant Preston reached Dawson, his first stop was headquarters, where he left the body of the dead gunman in Constable Downey's charge. Ned Travis would have liked to accompany the sergeant to the mansion house, but the sergeant vetoed the idea. The Northern Star was signaling its departure when the sergeant opened the door of Ben Chalmers' hotel room and found it empty. No one here, King. <laughs> the sergeant opened the closet door. There was nothing in it but a torn flannel shirt tossed in one corner. Oh. Here's your clue, King. Got the scent. <laughs> All right, boy, find him. <laughs> King led the way down the back stairs and out of the hotel, and then on to the waterfront. When the sergeant and he reached it, the Northern Star had already cast off her line. The gangplank was being drawn in. The paddle wheel was beginning to turn. Come on, King, we'll have to jump for it. The purser met the sergeant on the lower deck. Well, sergeant, you very nearly didn't make it. How far are you going? Forty miles? I'm looking for Ben Chalmers. Is he on board? Yes. He and Judge Garrett booked passage at the last moment. You want me to take you to the cabin? <laughs> King was waiting for the sergeant at the bottom of the companionway, leading to the second deck. Oh, never mind. King will find him. Go on, boy. <laughs> on the second deck, King led the sergeant to a companionway at the stern of the boat that ran up to the third deck. The dog stopped at the foot of it. All right, King. We'll be careful. The sergeant climbed halfway up the companionway and waited in silence for several minutes. Then his patience was rewarded. He heard the low voices of two men above him. Keeping a watch on the bow of the boat? Yes. No kind of against us. Shoot to kill. And if we get rid of them? Then we force the captain to steam straight on past 40 miles into American territory. Once there, we're safe. Keep your eyes. The sergeant visualized the upper deck, and he remembered two life rafts, piled one on top of the other, and lashed to the deck between the stern and the ship's smokestack. Quietly, the sergeant descended the companionway to the second deck and retraced his steps toward the bow of the boat. That's where they are, between those rafts and the stack. Gives them cover fore and aft, but they won't be expecting anyone to come over the rail amidships. The northern star was a side-wheeler, and the housings that covered the paddles ran almost up to the third deck. Amidships, the sergeant stepped over the rail to the sloping surface of the housing. Then he crawled slowly up and shaken by the vibrations of the paddle until he'd reached the top, just below the third deck railing, which fortunately was solid steel. He raised himself above the level of the railing slowly. He had placed Judd and Ben correctly between the life raft and the smokestack. He leveled his gun. Up with your hand! There he is! The sergeant's shooting was accurate. Chalmers and Garrett's watched. The two killers dropped to the deck. Members of the crew came running from the wheelhouse to disarm them. That was the end. The Northern Star turned back to Dawson. Chalmers and Garrett were taken to the hospital, seriously wounded, but certain to live and stand trial for murder. A few hours later, as the sergeant was finishing his report, King, who had been lying beside his desk, jumped to his feet. Someone outside, boy? Come in. Well, Mary and Ned. Good morning, Sergeant. Hello, Sergeant. Are we free to go? Of course, as long as you don't go too far. I've checked with Judge Hall and the Gold Commissioner. There may be some legal technicalities, man, but there's no doubt you're the sole owner of the Bonanza claim. The sole owner? Oh, no, sir. Yes, Ned. Obviously, you didn't read your partnership agreement very carefully. Well, it was just the usual one. And it says that in case one partner dies, the other becomes the sole owner. You're a rich man. Uh, if it hadn't been for you, I'd have been a dead one. You've been wonderful, Sergeant. Yeah, and we wonder if we could ask you one more favor. Of course, ma'am. Well, Mary's decided she wants to keep a closer eye on you. Yeah. And so we've decided to get married right away. <laughs> Today. Would you be the best man, Sergeant? Why, I'd count it a pleasure. My best wishes to you both. This whole business could use a happy ending. I'm glad this case is closed. <laughs> Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Here's a mutual note for you. Mutual is a network that has programs you can enjoy throughout the week. If you like question and answer fun, then you'll find there are all sorts of quiz programs you can listen to on Mutual. You can try and outguess the contestants and see if you know the right answer before they do. Even if you don't know, it's loads of fun listening to others. And you can learn a lot at the same time, too. And some of you boys and girls probably have favorite songs and favorite singers that you like to listen to. 
when you tune into Mutual, you'll hear many of the stars you like best, singing and playing the kind of music you enjoy most. Don't forget, too, there are programs of outdoor adventure and others of barn dance music and jamboree. There's plenty of good listening waiting for you on your Mutual dial. Tune in every weekday afternoon for Mutual's famous programs, especially designed for adventure lovers. And remember to listen other times as well for different kinds of programs you like over most of these stations. Sergeant Preston reported to the inspector at Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson to receive his next assignment. Sergeant, I want you to get up to McHugh's lumber camp on the Niora as fast as you can. Double, sir? It's serious, I'm afraid. Kate Corrigan has sworn that McHugh will never fulfill his contract with the Yukon Trading Company. I don't have to tell you, Sergeant, that Corrigan is a dangerous man. This may be our chance to put him behind bars, sir. I hope so. In my mind, he's a potential murderer. And that is exactly what Corrigan is planning. A murder to satisfy his greed and his hate for Bert McHugh. But what will his method be? A bullet? A knife? Or fire? The deadliest scourge the forest knows. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Mule Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, Radio Network for All America.